listeners, and welcome to the latest episode of Extra Extra. It's all about whiskey. I remain your host, Jason Johnston Yellen. It's always a pleasure to see the face, the hairdo of Joshua Morrissey Hatton. Whoop, whoop. Welcome, as always, Joshua. In the house. That's me. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Invariably, in Extra Extra, we cover a whiskey related news story in the first half. We riff on it in the second half. And then there are times when we shake it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Today, we're going to shake it up a little bit. We're actually going to be living in our inboxes, Joshua. I'm excited to be living in our inboxes, mostly because we often promise people, if you send us an email, we will <laughs> maybe use that for an episode. And, and now we get to... Follow through on that promise, not once, but twice, Jason. And more than that, mm-hmm. even, mm-hmm. we also got a little bit of industry feedback on our last episode. Yeah. Where the last episode, and I hope everyone listening today has listened to the last episode of Extra Extra. But in the last episode, we took an, an April Fool's post from Whiskey Sponge where Angus takes some time to to hashtag real talk about Mm. the industry. And in this year's post, he talked about independent bottling, the difficulties associated with independent bottling, the realities associated with independent bottling. And you and I covered it. We agreed with a a whole host of the points he was making. Mm -hmm. And some of the industry feedback that we received was, uh, well, to take note that not every experience is identical. Don't forget to consider the early days of independent bottling Mm -hmm. when things were difficult in different ways. Yeah, Selling some, some banner distilleries that have become banner distilleries was not easy. Independent bottlers weren't always well-regarded, well-thought-of. They didn't necessarily have cult followings or dedicated consumers. It it was interesting to me. It's it's a word that I always enjoy, context. Mm -hmm. I felt like those who reached out from the industry brought context to, to what we were discussing and what Angus was presenting in that edition of the Whiskey Sponge. And I'm curious on on your thoughts from covering the the feedback that we received. Yeah, I really liked what you said there, where it's different perspectives. And the industry people that reached out to us have been doing this work, independent bottling, for years, you know, in, in, in some cases, you know, going on a couple of decades. And like you had said, you know, selling whiskey 20 years ago was quite different. Selling whiskey 10 years ago was quite different. Selling whiskey mm-hmm. five years ago mm-hmm. was quite different. And, and look at Angus, on, mm-hmm. only a couple of years into it now. And mm-hmm. so, you know, he's dealing with with what he feels are his own difficulties. And we've got to experience that over our past uh, 11 going on 12 years now. And what I liked about the feedback that we got from our friends within the industry was in some cases they went point by point, you know, here's Angus's point here, here's, here's my rebuttal. And, and the Mm -hmm. fact of the matter was, I I don't think either party was false in what they were saying. They were just coming from a different perspective. And for me, it was nice to see that we can both be right or all three of us be right, or anybody can come to the table and say, let's talk about pricing. What makes that difficult? Let's talk about labels. Mm -hmm. What makes that difficult? And we're all going to... Storage, bottling, importation, so on and so forth. Right, And, and we're all going to come at it from a different perspective, all being correct, while it points thinking the other... Well, that's not my experience. That that can't be it, you know. Um, yeah, I think that that individualistic perspective and and individual companies dealing with with individual realities that have common points 
I thought was quite telling and I greatly appreciated those who wrote in from the industry yeah. yep. to share their perspective. And I, because I think for us in, in covering that article and in agreeing with a lot of it, it was where our perspectives aligned, mm. our 2022 experiences aligned. And so it was lovely hearing about experiences from the 90s and the noughts and the teens mm -hmm. like that I, I, I always like it when people raise their heads and say don't forget about additional context i, I think that's hugely valuable yeah it, it it really is so yeah i mean we, we could read everything that was brought to us but then we'd need a a four-hour episode and and also these were private comments which we will keep and that's the, yeah. <laughs> that's the point of emphasis. Yeah. <laughs> Private comments. So, so in, in talking about places where perspectives maybe diverge, mm -hmm. our lovely friend and a, and a gentleman whose name we mention a lot emailed us. Mm -hmm. And, and I, <laughs> I'm going to read his email and you know he's going to be poking the bear here. So his... His subject is One Nation Under Whiskey, which, welcome to Extra Extra, Michael, is <laughs> Ardbeg NFT. <clears throat> and he says, Excuse me, sorry, just clearing my throat there. I am sure you have heard about this, but thought it might be a worthy topic of discussion. Are two Ardbeg casks really worth $1.4 million? Then he sends a link. And then he goes on. And I thought the last Ardbeg release was seriously overpriced at $200. I'm assuming he's talking about Ardbeg Fermutation. The, yeah. Yeah. the 13-year-old with a combination of house yeast and wild yeast at Ardbeg, which I do own. I am halfway through a bottle. It is very tasty. Uh, $200 is $200. Michael says, now we have one. At $3,100. Yikes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the part where I know he's poking the bear. Have fun with this one, boys. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> so, oh. okay. We are, we're going to use the story as it was presented by the Spirits Business uh, on the 14th of April, uh, written up by Melita Keeley. And just really quickly, Jason, before you read this, just for our listeners, I think we agreed that we're going to read the Ardbeg article here, riff on it in the first half, and then we have a second story to read the listeners, uh, a bit of Compass Box news that, that came directly to us from our friend James Saxon within Compass Box, and we'll do that in the second half and also riff on that article in the second half. So like you had said, we're shaking things up a little bit here. Clearing out the inbox with timely information. So we begin. Isla-based distillery Ardbeg has released its first NFT, which means non-fungible token and not what Dave Worthington had informed us on a recent episode of One Nation Under Whiskey is no fucking thanks. So Dave, if you're listening, you steered us wrong, mate. I've been calling it no fucking thanks the whole time. I'll continue calling it that. The anyway, continue. <laughs> the sentence continues. Single malt whiskey, <laughs> which was buried in a peat bog for nearly three years. Two casks of Ardbeg whiskey, aged in second fill bourbon casks, were buried in a peat bog for two years and ten months near the distillery. I wonder why it's not we're buried in a peat bog near the distillery for two years and ten months. I wonder what the, the author was aiming for there. The whiskey's name, mm. Ardbeg Funfoid. You're speaking to a lowlander. I have no idea how to pronounce Gaelic, so there you have it. Take it for what it's worth. Takes inspiration from this and means under the turf in Scottish Gallic. Oh, under the turf, under the turf. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Where life is better, you'll get much wetter. Under <laughs> the turf. I can. Where there's no weather, you'll get 
decomposed Heather <laughs> under Ooh, the Look at you, Jason. <laughs> well done. Well done, you. <laughs> I don't know how much Heather is on Isla. I really don't. And certainly not on top of peat bogs. Bottled at 45.5% ABV, our big fun void will be priced at 1 ETH, mm-hmm. which at the time of writing equates to roughly £2,363 or $3,105. Now, I don't have Dave Worthington here to ask what ETH means. So, Joshua, what is ETH? Uh, it stands for Everlasting Tonsil Hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? So, I are you I'm saying right. you, have to, you have to make out with Ardbeg to, to get your NFT? I'm saying, or is that a is that a no fucking thanks? I'm just saying, invest in um, knee pads. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> the time spent underground is said to have given the whiskey an earthy, mossy, and herbal flavors. <laughs> I, <laughs> Wait, what? I'm a just flavors. Answers. I'm just reading Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Just yeah. roll with it, if, Jason. If one were to edit that, it would be the time spent underground is said to have given the whiskey earthy, mossy, and herbal flavors rather than Arbeg's trademark intense smoky notes. Ardbeg's head of distilling and whiskey creation, Dr. Bill Lumsden, said, I think it's safe to say we've unearthed a truly special Ardbeg <laughs> here. Ardbeg von Foyd is earthy and mossy with one hell of a herbal nose. Hmm. Good luck to those hoping to secure some of Ardbeg's buried treasure. I hope you land a bottle. Ardbeg von Foyd is limited to 456 bottles which will be available to purchase exclusively on blockbar.com at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on 19th of April, which by the 19th of April, you're in EDT and not EST. Oh boy, you're real. I Google that. I I Google that every time I have to use it. That's that's how I know. I just stick with EST. uh, I I, I know you switch (sighs) between the two, but... As an American, I can tell you most Americans wow. just stick with EST, PST, CST, MST. They, they never switch. PTSD, to- <laughs> STD. <laughs> um, Did you say so STD? 19th of, April is, <laughs> 19th of April is in the rear view mirror. So I do have a question that we will be answering. Are all 456 bottles sold out? That, sir, will be reserved for riffing. Mm. We continue. Successful buyers will receive a digital certificate that will verify their ownership and the authenticity of the bottle. Bottles will be stored at Blockbar's facility in Singapore until they're redeemed. Buyers can also trade their NFT within the Blockbar.com marketplace, store the bottle in their virtual bar, (laughs) or offer the NFT through the company's new gifting platform. I just read a series of words that you could have put any words in any order and I would have understood them just as well. Yeah, yeah, virtual bar. Go on. But but we will return. Mm -hmm. Dov Falik, CEO and co-founder of Block Bar, said, We hope whiskey fans new and old... (laughs) as a representative of an old whiskey fan, (laughs) I have an opinion. We hope whiskey fans, new and old, will take the opportunity to join our community and discover this PT experiment, which Block Bar will keep in perfect condition until the owners are ready to enjoy it. And then it closes with a quick sentence about Ardcore coming out, which... Oh, they're Fijil bottling, yeah. (sighs) <sighs> All right, we don't we don't have a we don't have a break here because we're just going to run straight into the riffing, and then after the quick riff, we'll take a break. But <sighs> thoughts, <laughs> my 
my old initial- man shouts at clouds. <laughs> <laughs> old man, old men. Uh, <laughs> my initial thought is, what does any of this have to do with whiskey? None of it has to do with actual whiskey, right? Th- think of the term virtual bar. Do you remember back in the day when connoisseur.com put out a virtual bar and we we all uploaded fo- you know, photos mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. pulled photos from online yeah. where we said, yeah, I've got a Balvenie Doublewood. Yeah, I've got a Laphroaig 10 cast strength. Yeah, I've got yeah. an Ardbeg 10. And awesome. That was our virtual bar and you could put up your own tasting notes and you could... Yep. Share that around, and if somebody wanted samples, you'd say, "Hey, go look at my, go look at my connoisseur profile, and you can see what's open." And yeah, happy to share samples with you if that's what you're interested in. Mm-hmm. It was a virtual representation of something that was sitting right beside us, reachable and 100%. touchable. Yep. And this sounds different. And and here, Joshua, I'm gonna put mm. on my generous hat. And I don't mean a hat that sits a little baggy on the top of my head. I'm going to be I'm going to be generous here as as I stop shouting at clouds for 10 or 15 mm, seconds. Okay, I'll play that part after you're done. You you and I have really taken to heart what was said in our bespoken interview with with Stu and Martin. Mm-hmm. Where they talked about consumers and how many different consumers there are. And we've referenced this multiple times since that bespoken interview and the bespoken episode went live. Mm -hmm. There's one conversation to be had here about the world of NFTs. And I'm not your man to be having that conversation because I don't know about them. I pay no attention to them. I Avoid them as much as I possibly can. I understand it's a thing young people are getting up to. Power to you, young people. Go do a young person thing. So, Arbeg getting into the NFT business, I'm okay putting a box around that, putting the box on my virtual shelf, and walking away. (laughs) But where I then find myself, and this is what you just alluded to a second ago, is I'm now looking at a $3,100 bottle of Ardbeg. And as an old whiskey fan who's, who's been here since the mid-90s, I can't get my head around that. I, I think it all ties back, and, and I, I do appreciate you, you, you being generous here, right? And, and I agree with you in that we really took to heart what our friends at Bespoken said, where the consumer base is not a monolith. I think my big issue here is that this has nothing to do with a consumable product. I mean, yes, in the end, it is a consumable product. But, <laughs> Thank but, you. But there, there is a host of of other bottles from Ardbeg, from McAllen, from Springbank, from whomever that have a $3,100 bottle that you could purchase and put on your shelf. And when the right time comes, you can say, you know what? Let's open that. Let's share it. And in this particular case, because it's never physically on your shelf... I think, I mean, A, you're never afforded the possibility to have that spontaneity, one. And then two, it's almost like the approach of someone with a credit card. They're buying things with money that isn't real. And so you're sharing something that is real but is also not real. And it becomes Mm -hmm. less special Mm -hmm. a whiskey product And more special, the ability to increase in value and maybe trade and maybe make money off of, which has little to do, again, with whiskey consumption. Yeah, on on that front, I almost feel like 
if they had sold two buried casks for two hundred uh, for four hundred and fifty six ETH, and they had one magical mystery buyer, I would have. I I think I would have felt better about that, because that's those are all just a bunch of made up words and made up experiences. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that it's a bottle of whiskey. And I've been around bottles of whiskey (laughs) really all my life. But in this single malt guise of mine since the Mm -hmm, mm mid-90s. And for 26 years, 27 years, a bottle of whiskey has meant something. And being presented with this NFT, it's like a bottle of whiskey doesn't mean anything. And that just makes my head spin. The magic is gone. That that's you know, this is I think in the end, if I were to strip away everything, I would say it takes away from that magic feeling you have of owning a special bottle, of having friends over and your friend says, you know what? you know, I just had a child or my daughter just graduated from Yale or, you know, something like this. And you say, you know what? That's special. Let's open up a bottle here. You're, you're deprived of that ability to have a special bottle and do something with it, with any degree of spontaneity. All the magic is taken away from it. It's, it's become a commodity. And, and nothing more than a commodity. And when whiskey is nothing more than a commodity, then all of its, all the mysteriousness, all of the magic, all of the specialness is just, it's just gone and it's sterile and it's gross. And it, it just, like, I'm with you. Like, I don't understand NFTs. There are people that do and they're having fun with it and they're making money and blah, blah, blah. But there's a reason I got into whiskey, and it has nothing to do with NFTs. And I would say there's a reason a host of people got into whiskey, including young people. And it also has nothing to do Mm. with NFTs, right? It's that magic Mm -hmm. of whiskey. Mm -hmm. And when you strip away that magic, then it's nothing. Then it doesn't even matter. It could be the most wonderfully intense, mossy, herbaceous Ardbeg you'll you could ever taste, but it's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah, it's interesting that we started out with the the feedback we received about the whiskey sponge article and how it's about perspective and context and different experiences <laughs> yeah. over multiple decades. And it's it's quite striking to look right now. I can't help but think about Ardbeg very young. Mm. When it was released in 2004, 2005, they were thereabouts, thereabouts yep. as a 30 or 35 pound bottle of whiskey that was, our bag is back, baby. Like, come and experience this. Yeah. Yep. Come on this journey with us. And now we sit in 2022 with a release that's, an NFT that can live in a virtual bar that's a, th- a thing wholly unto itself. And, and I think what you're saying a second ago about that, that commodification of it is, is really difficult. At the same time, there are different kinds of consumer all over the place. I will tell you, yeah. and, I, and you've just pulled a, a Dave Worthington on me, ETH is not eternal tonsil hockey. It's, Everlasting? It's, it's the Ethereum price and is connected to blockchain. And that's words that I've now put on wax. I did look up blogbar.com and there are 92 editions uh, remaining available for one ETH on the website. I don't know if they made all 456 available. I assume they did, but 92 remain Hmm. uh, as of this recording, April 25th. And while I was on Block Bar, they're also advertising the Dalmore limited edition uh, Grand Cru, 33-year-old. It is 3.05 
E T H. So huh. somewhere around nine, nine and a half thousand dollars for that thirty-three year old Dalmore. For a mm, yep. We uh, I could go on yelling at clouds, just as I'm sure you could go on yelling at clouds about this. But I think that's all it will be, Jason. <laughs> I feel like when you get uncomfortable, you you go to your comfort place, which is taking on hosting duties. And I feel like you've moved into the host role. Would like, you, uh, can, we, can we take a break? Can we take a break? I don't want to talk about this bad stuff anymore. Make the bad man go away. Okay, let's, let's take a break here and we'll come back you. with some good Thank news you. about Compass Box and then we'll get out of this episode. Thank you. I'm still feeling a bit uncomfortable about this whole NFT, ETH, Feng Shui, Feng Shui, whatever, Ardbeg, Dalmore nonsense. I am going to take over hosting just a little bit. I want to read, Jason, if you don't mind, I want to read the email that came in from our good friend James Saxon from Compass Box. Well, keep, keep your eye on the time like any good host of Extra Extra does. Uh, okay. So he starts off, he says, Dear gents, my hope is that you are both wonderfully well and enjoyed your Passovers. James, I think we're both well, despite having read what we just had to read and, uh, and had wonderful Passovers. Uh, <laughs> so he goes on, he says, I wanted to get in touch with you both personally to update you on some exciting news as far as Compass Box is concerned. As supporters and one-time interviewers of ours, I wanted you to be some of the first to know. That makes me feel very good. Essentially, and this is really big news, essentially Compass Box has taken on new majority investors. And then he lists it out. And I always had a problem pronouncing, what, how do you pronounce when the A and the E are like conjoined twins? No idea. Okay, so I'm just going to slaughter it and move on. So he says... <laughs> <laughs> help me with the Scots Gaelic. I'm not helping you with the Latin. <laughs> so I think it's called Calum Capital. Let's assume it's Calum Capital, based in London. With some changes to the company structure, the below is a press release due to go out Monday, which actually is today. So, so here Already we go. Recording. And, and to be clear, <clears throat> you, we receive... Tons of press releases that are ostensibly for extra, extra, and or One Nation Under Whiskey yeah. that we do not read. No. We do not. But James is such a, a good supporter of of the podcast and of ours. As he said, he, he, he's we have interviewed him and John. He's he's been part of One Nation Under Whiskey, and so we're we're making an exception because we like James and we like John. A few, few things give me more joy than to delete a press release that I don't care about. You know, <laughs> here's a new non-alcoholic gin. I don't care about your non-alcoholic gin. Yeah. Here's a cocktail for Mother's Day. Oh, here's a cocktail for Father's Day. Here's a cocktail for Valentine's Day. Here's a cocktail for Tuesday. So the press release reads... We've just completed a deal that takes on new investors in Compass Box, people who share our vision of the future and really want to help us get there. Along with this new investment comes a new CEO. Maurice Doyle is joining us, and he will work closely with John Glazer, founder and whiskey maker, to lead us into this new chapter. Maurice has almost 30 years of experience in high-end spirits and markets around the world. John is looking forward to focusing solely on the areas where he can add the most value, which are whiskey making and nurturing the culture of the business. I really love that. Compass Box has always been grounded in John's very personal vision for what the future of whiskey making can be, and it will stay that way. New investment will fund this Ambition over the long term, giving our teams more opportunities to explore, experiment, and innovate. So that so that's the end of the of the press release. It's very short, very to the point. Is saying, "Hey, everybody, here's a bit of news," and then he mm -hmm. he gives us some stuff that's just for us, which I'm not going to read. 
And then he says, uh, wishing you both a splendid weekend, James. And then he says, P.S., I loved how tenacious Sam, he's talking about (laughs) Sam Simmons, was with your MWC game. What was MWC? Oh, Malt Whiskey Companion. There you go. I knew you'd get oh, there. It took I, knew. Me a while. I believed in you. I, I believed like, in you more than NFT, believed in yourself. No fucking uh, Exactly. Everlasting yep. tonsil hockey. Uh-huh. Mitochondrial water closet. Mitochondrial water closet game. I think that's what it stood for. <laughs> anyway, he says it's another entertaining episode. So <laughs> he's not wrong. He's, he's not, not wrong. wrong. He's not wrong. That was a long stuff. way for a shortcut, but he's not wrong. <laughs> Yeah, this is terrific news here and and definitely worthwhile sharing. I know that in all of our tastings, you and I talk about Compass Box at great length. Yes. And partly because as we're standing up presenting single casks and, and pontificating on the value of single casks, we always talk about the value of blending, the mastery involved mm. in blending. And we, you know, we tell that story of, Here's blending for a blend. Here's blending or vatting or combining casks to produce a consistent single malt. And here's putting a single cask out into the world. But then we've also experimented with single batch nation and single casks of mm-hmm. blended malt. And we, we just did a, a club pick with a single cask of a blended scotch. And so... I love talking about blending. I love talking about the the mastery involved there and to see Compass Box garner more investment so they can continue to be successful, I think is a win for the industry. And I think it's a win for blending. Well, any any time I hear of a larger company or an investment company taking over a smaller operation, I do get nervous, right? Because there's always that concern that, you know, the money's good. It's going to fund us to do X, Y, and Z. And you say, oh, geez, yeah, but at what cost, right? That's always the concern. At what cost? Compass Box has done an amazing job over how long now? 20 years? 20 years. Yeah, 20 years or so. Uh, of, Of really highlighting blends for enjoyment rather than blends for a label or blends for a marketing campaign, right? It was, it was specifically for flavor and, and I've always enjoyed that. And, and so I was concerned, but in two separate points, it says John is heading up the whiskey making and the nurturing of the culture of the business. That is so important to me mm-hmm. as, as a consumer and as a fan of Compass Box, where it says he can, um, John is looking forward to focusing solely on the areas where he can add the most value, whiskey making <laughs> and nurturing the culture of the business. That in and of itself, for me, is what has made Compass Box as special as it has been. And if he's going to be the one continually looking after that and being in charge of that, then, then I think we're good. And if they've got more money behind them to, to fund those operations, I think it's only good for blended whiskeys, be it, be it compass box and those that, that follow along, right? Because as we've heard year over year over year, you know, rising tide lifts all ships. I think we've reached the point, Joshua, where we should be wrapping up. I have wrestled back my hosting responsibilities from you in order to share with our dear listeners that if you want to reach out to us, drop us a note at questions at onenationunderwhiskey.com. There is no E in whiskey. If you feel like it, drop an email to info at singlecastnation.com. I think that I, I don't know if we say very much on Extra Extra, but if you have a chance to leave a, a, an Apple review of us, that would be quite cool. I, I know we say it about One Nation Under Whiskey. Uh, please drop a note about One Nation Under Whiskey, but Extra Extra, you know, we have we bring some whiskey news, mm-hmm. we have a little riff, we have a little fun. We always, you can set your watch by us, get out of here in a tight 35. 
we've done it again today. So kudos to us. Always, uh-huh. always respectful of our dear listeners' time. And Joshua, I am also respectful of your time. And so I will say thank you for sharing your time with us. Oh, I'm supposed to respond. Uh, Just very quickly. (laughs) You don't have much time. (laughs) You're very welcome. Just ever so quickly. We have had some new reviews and some new comments about our podcast. So listen into the next episode of One Nation Under Whiskey, where you get to hear some some people's comments and some five-star reviews. Uh, oh, you delightful. mentioning it just reminded me of that. So, Take it easy. Well, we will also be respectful of our dear listeners' time, and we will thank them for it and bid them adieu. And I remain Jason Johnson Yellen, lover of sandwiches. And we will say until next time, peace. Peace. peace.